We are the Falco family, where every day is an adventure of faith and love. So we live and we learn. It's amazing what you can accomplish from a state of rest. We were packing up to head out for a week away with family by the lake. Y'all, I bought each and every one of my planners. I packed my iPad with all the bookmarked web pages listing, potential curriculum for the coming year of study. My main focus was planning all the things. Friends, I did none of that. Instead of pulling out my planners, I spent my time in the present capturing more memories so they're less likely to fade away. I soaked in their smiles and considered their most current expressions of interest, their latest curiosities and most frequent questions. I laughed with them, swam with them, played with them, and after the sunset and everyone has fallen asleep, after their day was over and their hearts were full, I wrote. I wrote in order to recall all that I was learning of them and ideas and imaginations of how their journeys might continue. Just a lot of late life and the start of summer plans. This was my unschool planning retreat. Hey, sweet girl. You wanna get back in the pool? Are you having a good time? Yeah. Back, I just wanna get them going out on the kayak, all right? Everybody was looking for you, Kendall. We have just settled into our summer plans and I thought I would share. We start the summer off uh, with a family vacation to the lake, Lake Norman in North Carolina. And it is everything that I need to just rest and relax and focus in on the family that we've been missing and just really consider what we want to do for the summer, what we want to get up to, how I want to wrap up the year of lessons. Um, 
and how I want to move forward. So it's like the perfect little recipe for just establishing what I want, what we want out of our summer plans. So I'm so excited for summertime adventures. We're officially going to be moving into like those high school years, which I'm so excited about. And I got a baby in middle school. I got one at the edge of elementary school and one heading into high school. Things are exciting. <laughs> But don't let my smile fool you. She be going through it, okay? <laughs> she goes through it. So it's just not easy to get on film or else I would share that. But I'm not because who turns the camera on when they are really struggling through the day? Not me, okay? Okay, let's do this. We do switch up our plans and we decide what our focus is going to be. As always, it's all about exploring, discovering, and lots of flexibility. So that is key for us. I just go and write down on a pretty little post-it. It's not so pretty, it's just a regular post-it. <laughs> and I write out whatever my ideas are for what we want to focus on. This summer, we are um, wrapping up. Say hi. Hi. No, they can't see you. Hi. <laughs> nice, Kendall. Let me see. I don't think they're going to be able to see it, but they're probably going to see all these nasty little fingerprints. <laughs> So that's what he's out there working on. I think Cameron is reading and I think Savannah is writing. So we are wrapping up Cameron's eighth grade gap year and eventually I'll get around to explaining what I decided to do with that. Um, which means that this uh, quarter, this last leg of his gap year is gonna be full of little tiny adventures and we're excited. I really, really want to work on our AM and PM routines. I think that is going to serve them well moving forward so i feel like there are always like ebbs and flows and times where we have really solid a.m and p.m routines and then they fall all the way off and so this is one of those times so i really wanted to focus in on establishing a very solid a.m and p.m routine mainly because we have gotten very very used to waking up later and going to bed super late so i want to break us out of that rhythm slash routine and try to get us to move towards being earlier risers and going to sleep a bit early or just for this season at least um so we're focusing on that for the summer and then our main schedule that we are establishing for our study time is read something write something make something take something this is a schedule slash routine that we have implemented throughout the years and we just love it. It just works for so many different reasons. So we compile a book stack, a newest book stack, and just kind of go over things that they've read that I didn't realize that they finished or that they added to their reading list that I didn't know about so that I can keep a good record of those things. And then they just, we go and browse the bookstores and look for new releases or hidden gems and we just compile a new book stack for each of us which we can take away books we can add books in it's very flexible but the goal is just to have um a stack of books that we can kind of pull from throughout the summer so read something also I want to mention that it's not just books that we're reading. We can read articles, um, we can read scripts, uh, we can read newspapers, we can read letters. So reading doesn't just include just whatever books we have. Um, Kendall tends to focus on nonfiction books. Cameron tends to focus on fiction. Um, it's just always nice and flexible. And I try to make sure I just kind of know where everybody is and what is going on. So with Write Something, we have a few assignments that we have divvied up just to give them starting ideas on different things to write and different writing to work on. So we are going to be continuing to work on that. Of course, they're always working on their books, just continuing to like revise their stories and edit and read them to one another. That's just like an ongoing thing around here. And then different writing as well, like writing letters to family. I mean, all of these things are things I've talked about in the past. They're just kind of things that maybe fall off or fall to the wayside and then you just pick them back up again later. 
So we are focusing in on read something, write something, and then make something, take something. Make something is just make sure that when you start a project and you're putting your hands to something that you finish it. <laughs> because we're always making things, but we're not always finishing things. And that's probably uh, because of me. I am not the best finisher in the world and I'm working on that. And so I found that that kind of like goes over into the kids habits. And so that's something I want us to work on. Um, and then take something actually doesn't mean what it sounds like. It means it just rhymed a little bit. So I used it, but take something is actually like when we focus on giving and serving. So throughout the summer, um, they have a calendar, a calendar that's part of our printables, a simple calendar that we use in many different ways. And this is one of the different ways that we use it. Um, in the past, we use it for them to plan um, out their month, uh, for them to write in any assignments or um, anything that they're working on. We've also used them as a weather tracker. So they'll go in and keep track of the weather throughout the month. Uh, but this time around, since we're trying to track our giving and our service, um, in order to be more intentional about it and make sure too much time is not going by, um, where we are giving of ourselves intentionally to others. Um, I am just going to print out their printable for the month, um, each month of the summer, and they are just going to be responsible for it, including one thing that they did to give and or serve um, someone else um, each day of the month. I like doing it this way. I always love to see other homeschool families talk about how they handle giving and service and uh, in the beginning I, I used to see different examples of ways they would go to soup kitchens or you know just different other things they could do in the community or in the church or whatever else and um, how they established this culture of going out to serve and it just it wasn't the way that it pans out the best in our homeschool life, if that makes sense. So when I let go of that idea that it needed to look like or I wanted it to look like some what it looks like for some other family, I realized that um, the way that we could create that culture and our family could be a little bit different. So what we focus on is just individual responsibility in giving and serving and using our gifts. So that could simply mean going over to the neighbor's house to help them um, learn more about their devices or just I don't want to always um, have them responding to uh, prompts that I'm giving them for ways that they can give and serve. I really want them to lean into their hearts and their minds and the gifts that they know they have and find ways for them to give and serve others each and every day. I hope that makes sense. Every time I have something in my heart and my mind and I try to share it, I feel like it comes out a jumbled mess. So yeah, that's like the fourth thing is what we call take. It's actually giving and serving and keeping a log of how we are intentionally giving and serving each day during the summer. What else? What else? Of course, we have like tiny adventures and travels. We want to try to keep it local. So um, we're really going to just lean into more travels inside of Philadelphia. That's the um, metro area that is closest to us. And so we just really want to continue to explore Philadelphia, soak it up for everything that it is and make sure we're not leaving anything left behind. We don't want to leave this area leaving all these hidden gems that we never like really ex that we never really explored and experienced so we are hitting up philadelphia and trying to do all of the tiny things around the city um in addition to that we do have a few camps that we kind of have in mind this is new for us this is not something this is not something that we've typically done in the past so this is kind of a first time deal for us uh, because camps are expensive, friends. <laughs> they cost money. And so our life, our homeschool life has always been about, you know, trying to be creative and flexible, not being limited by certain barriers. And money is a big barrier in homeschool life, I have found for us. It may not be for anybody else, <laughs> but for us, it's a big barrier. Um, we are working off of one income. And so you have to learn to be flexible and creative and really lean into the fact that it doesn't 
have to be what society makes um, makes of it. So I really feel very strongly about that barrier in education um, that that people, you know, kids and people don't have access to certain things that allows them to live and learn. We are not about that life. So we're always trying to find things and ways that we can be flexible. And so camps have not been one of those things that we really get have gotten into in the past um, but this year we do have a few that are on the list that uh, with a little crowd funding from parentals grandparents things like that uh, we might be able to be a part of like basketball camps and cooking camps and there's a coding camp um, baking camp so we will see how that goes that's not like a for sure thing that's happening but it is a thing that is an option for our summer fun um really the only plan the kids are just really looking forward to being in the backyard and just being able to flexibly go through what they're reading and what they're writing and what they're making and that is fills my heart with so much joy another thing that i kind of wrote out on my post-it is just kind of like a general plan for where what we want to do like designating a day throughout the week um that we try to hit up certain places. So it's really simple. We just have a bookstore slash library day. Then we're going to do a park day. And then we have um, a community pool type of uh, membership. Uh, so we're going to head there two days of the week. Um, and that's going to be really good because the kids can go and they can do their work. They can do their reading, their writing, um, maybe a little bit of their making, depending on what they're working on. And I can be up in the fitness area and Cameron can be in the gym area working on getting shots up for basketball and drills and things like that. Um, so there's just different things that we can do when we go to the community center um, throughout the week. So that's just my general plan. It doesn't mean that we have to do that, but it's just that, you know, something that's very lightly planned is on, uh, the list of things to do. So that's it. <laughs> I feel like I talked about a whole bunch of nothing, but, um, yeah, that's just how we rotate through our ideas and things because I feel like there's no shortage of ideas in homeschool life it's just all about like how you're executing them and implementing them and when you're doing it um that's just forever the rotation around here so I probably have a tiny bit of time left <laughs> we really enjoyed our time at the lake with our family it is the best way to start off our summer um just to really have us nice and you know connected with our foundation which is what matters most and that is us being with our family and really living and learning and exploring and not getting caught up in the checklist of life and the um, expectations of society and starting things off at the lake is like the perfect way for us to just really focus in on what we want to do throughout the summer and then um, how we want to make plans for the coming um, year of learning together. So I am very much so like a memory keeper and I love finding new ways to keep memories in different seasons. So this time around for our um, tiny adventures, the Passport Size Traveler's Notebook and I love it. Um, I actually customized it and made this little pocket um, on the front. I really enjoyed spending my time <laughs> and making this little pocket for them. I'm able to keep my little uh, ID card for homeschool life. Um, and then I'm going to be able to document our adventures, the people that we're meeting, the things that we're learning inside of here. Okay, so the last thing, the last thing that I am going to do is I have this little acrylic board that I keep in the homeschool room. And I'm just gonna use a wet erase marker and I'm going to translate my summer plans that I put on this planning post-it. And I'm going to transfer that onto this acrylic board so I can post it in the homeschool room and everybody is just 
on the same accord as far as like what our plans are for this summer. That's what we're doing. I would love to know what you have planned for the summer. What is going on? Um, do you take the whole summer off? Do you school through the summer? Like just what are some of the things that you plan on getting into? I'd love for you to share. Thank you so much for watching. Life is so very full of lessons, right? And our goal as always is to live and to learn. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe!